September of this year just gone past, the newly elected leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, asked me to serve in his shadow cabinet as shadow minister for mental health. Now, when the news of my appointments broke, something very interesting happened. My office was inundated with calls, with letters and emails. Now, a number of those were conveying good uh, wishes on behalf of the various campaigns and charities in the field of mental health. But many more, I'd say hundreds and hundreds of them, were from people navigating mental health services. Their cries of frustration, their anger, and their heartbreaking tales of too many vulnerable people were of people being let down by a system at breaking point. It was from parents of children that were unable to get specialist mental health beds. They were from patients frustrated at a lack of specialist services. I had messages from psychiatric nurses managing ever greater demand and ever diminishing resources. Calls, letters and emails revealing a situation that is just not working for patients. Over three quarters of students say that they've experienced a mental health problem in the past year, and that was according to a survey conducted by the National Union of Students. Almost nine out of 10 respondents reported having experienced feelings of stress, while 77% reported having felt anxiety, and 69% feelings of depression. And over a third of those surveyed so that they had experienced thoughts of self-harm, while 62% recorded having experienced feelings of hopelessness and worthlessness. Over half of the students experiencing mental health issues did not seek support, according to that so There's survey. so much that needs to be done, but I have put forward three proposals, which I think are a good place to start. Firstly, that we should demand that the government restores transparency to the murky picture that we have of mental health funding. Secondly, that ministers should address the fundamental inequality enshrined in our NHS constitution. And thirdly, and I think most importantly, we should press ministers to really prioritize prevention and fully implement a cross-departmental plan to prevent mental health problems from developing in the a first place. A huge disparity remains at the very heart of our NHS. Now, the NHS constitution sets out the rights to which patients, public, and staff are entitled, and the pledges that the NHS is committed to achieving. The NHS constitution enshrines our rights to drugs and to other treatments for physical health conditions, but it does not extend that right to talking therapies. Now, recently, the government consulted on adding a right to psychological therapies to the NHS constitution. At the last minute, they decided not to include it in the latest version. And I think that decision reinforces the existing bias in our system against mental Jeremy health. Jeremy Hunt, the health secretary, laid a lot of the blame for the rise, particularly in young people's mental health problems, at the door of social media. Now, there are reports that link time spent on social media with child mental health problems. And this absolutely must be taken seriously. But social media also has a positive side, and there are more and more people able to discuss their mental health issues and seek well, peer I'm support just, online. I'm just really interested because you obviously genuinely care about mental health and people with mental health issues. Um, but the problem is you seem to also think that this government doesn't, doesn't at least put the money where, where its mouth is at any rate. Um, but you've, you've got a leader that, who is seemingly, according to the polls, unelectable. And so a lot of what you're trying to achieve is going to be very, very difficult in opposition, and you're going to be in opposition at this rate until, well, certainly 2020 and thereafter. Do you think maybe he should go and then you can enable some of your other policies within your party? Jeremy Corbyn was elected as our leader back in September. He had the largest mandate uh, of any Labour leader in our history. And in terms of the people I've got on board to join the Labour Party, it's been pretty staggering. And in my own constituency, I've been moved by the hundreds of people that have joined my constituency Labour Party and people that have joined the Labour Party across the country. I can see people nodding, so I, I take that maybe some new members um, from the room. And on this issue, Jeremy Corbyn's absolutely committed to mental health. And he's, in fact, only today at PMQs talked about mental health in the, in the context of um, nurse bursaries and what the government plans to do about that. So our job as 
the opposition, first and foremost, is to hold the government to account, and that's what I'm going to and have been doing.